So all right now, give me Deuteronomy 33, verse 17. Now we're going to touch on Northern Kingdom. I haven't talked about Northern Kingdom in quite a while. We're just going to talk about them for a bit. Deuteronomy 33, verse 17, Solomon. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 17. His glory is like the firstling of his bullock. Uh huh. Talking and about it, Joseph. Go ahead. And his horns are like the horns of unicorns. When y'all read the word unicorn there in the Bible, it means rhino, rhinoceros. That's what it's to write it down. That's what it's talking about. Go ahead. With them, he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth. So with his horn, he shall push the people to the ends of the earth, meaning the west, because they were where they were where on the eastern hemisphere. Joseph's sons would be used to push the people to the ends of the earth, meaning the other side of the earth. Go ahead. And they are the ten thousands of Ephraim. Ephraim was the head. Go ahead. And they are the thousands of Manasseh. And Manasseh backed them up as the number two tribe to get the ten tribes on this side of the earth. Second Ezra 13 and 40, please. Second Ezra 13 and 40. Second Ezra chapter 13 and verse 40. Those are the ten tribes mm -hmm. which were carried away. Now it says ten tribes because who was there with them at this time? Dan. Dan. Not Levi. Who said Levi? Dan. Remember in Chronicles it says the northern kingdom kicked Levi out and sent them to Judah because they didn't want... <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, Simeon is li li uh, lava. Uh, they kicked y'all out because they didn't want y'all on the high holidays to bring them back to Jerusalem. They said that was what Jeroboam did. Where did I say go? Second Ezra, Second Ezra 13. 13, 40. Come on. Which were carried away prisoners. We don't verse again. I miss something. Those are the ten tribes uh -huh. which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king. Right. Whom Salmanasseh, the king of Assyria, laid away captive. And he carried them over the waters. And so came they into another land. And so came they into another land. Go ahead. But they took this council among themselves. So the other land they went to was the land of Assyria. Go ahead. That they would leave the multitude of the heathen. So write this down. They decided to leave the multitude of the heathen under Cyrus. C-Y-R-U-S. The king of Persia. Write that down. You, you're not a slavery and just say, hey, the 10 millions of us, let's just get up and leave. No. Cyrus gave them liberty. To go back, you can read about that decree in Ezra chapter 1. It goes into detail. Everybody with me? Write that down. Okay. So when King Cyrus gave them liberty, Solomon, read that part again. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. That's the key. You'll have some Israelites say, that's Africa. It's not Africa. We were all, I should, we were all throughout Africa. What are you talking about? Okay. It says where never mankind dwelt. That's the key you want to look at right there. Y'all let people fool you and say it's Africa. It ain't Africa. Go ahead. That they might dare keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. Read. And they entered into Euphrates. Now he's going to give you the map. Hey, hey. Uh, IT, can y'all find, I, I, I don't know if you have a map of Euphrates and uh, Indian Ocean. I want that area. Euphrates, India Ocean, Indian Ocean. Okay, right there. Okay, now y'all see Euphrates, right? Up there around Turkey, Syria, top part of Iran. Do y'all see it, right? Y'all see the Euphrates River, right? Y'all see Euphrates? They entered into the Euphrates. Follow Euphrates, please. Follow Euphrates. Follow it, follow it, follow it. It goes into the Persian Gulf. Keep going. Now go around. Then it goes around. There's a big bulb there. It ain't supposed to be there. But it, I want you to understand this. When I need, I need whoever, How many of y'all have been on boats for a while? Been on a boat? Okay, only four, five brothers. Six, okay, eight of you. When you travel for a long distance... When you run out of supplies, you have to do what? You got to stop and dock and get supplies. Remember, this is a year's journey. And it's not just a ship with 60 people. These are ships of millions of people. I want you all to think about it in your head. So from this traveling, okay, when they get around uh, Saudi Arabia, move the, move the globe, raise it up, raise it up. You see Somalia, go down, go down. Oh, that, it ends there? 
Do you have the other side of the map? Y'all got all. Y'all should have all the maps there. I, I know y'all do. I know y'all got more maps. You got to have more maps. Should be in the folder. In the folder. Map. 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 Mappy. He think I'm saying mumpy. I'm not saying mumpy. I said mappy. Map. All right. Put it on the screen. I guess that'll do. That'll do. Put it on the screen. Okay. So Euphrates, Persian Gulf, they came around. Like you can see Somali on. Uh, take the thing around. Go around for me. Like, right. Y'all can see. They had to go around. Now, if they had to stop, they had to get food, uh, water, whatever. They had to get you know, things that they need. When you go around South Africa, right? Ships go around South Africa, all right? Then they had to go up. Now, when you get to up over, can you have the map of the other side of the world? Do you have the map of the other side? Yep, the Americas, the Americas. This is where they went. God has given you their route, their route where they went. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Put it on the screen. All right, y'all see Africa right there? And, and, and they got Africa real small. You know that's the fake map. Yeah. Africa's supposed to be larger than everything there, but they always put it real little. So they came around and entered the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, that's what happened. Now, for example, for example, uh, Solomon, give me... It's been so long since I've read it. I want Gad. Give me Gad. I think I want Deuteronomy 33. I think... It's been so long. Now, we got all the breakdowns of the tribes on the website. Shame on you if you don't know the breakdown. Deuteronomy 33. Find me Gad. Verse 20. Deuteronomy. Wait, wait. Let me look at it. Yes. Wait. 20. Yes, that's it. 20. Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 20. And of Gad, he said, blessed be he that enlargeth Gad. Now, listen. There, there is a tribe amongst the Ashantis that call themselves Gad. There is. Amongst the Ashanti, we met many of them when we were in Ghana. But watch this. Read again. And of Gad, he said, Blessed be he that enlargeth Gad. He dwelleth as a lion. He dwelleth as a lion, a predator. Go ahead. And teareth the arm. And this is why, wait, wait, when it says he dwelleth as a lion, remember, find me that precept in Chronicles. Their faces. I didn't write it down. 12? First Chronicles chapter 12. Yes, get that. When it says he dwelleth as a lion. Read that. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 8. And of the Gadites, they separated themselves unto David and to the whole, to the wilderness, men of might and men of war fit for the battle that could handle shield and buckler, whose faces were like the faces of lions and were as swift as the rose upon the mountains. So they would put the war paint on to mimic that of a lion and it was swift upon the mountains. Go back now. When it says Gad would dwell as a lion. He dwelleth as a lion mm -hmm. and teareth the arm with the crown of the head. To be a part of the tribe, they had the blood brother covenant. Where you had to uh, uh, split your skin and mingle the blood of the uh, someone in the tribe. And the king, the cacique, or the, what would they call him? The chief would have to accept you as a member of the tribe. Read on. Here's and, what I wanted. And he provided the first part. For himself. When it says he provided the first part from some, meaning the best part of the land, Gad took that when he came on this side of the world. Go ahead. Because there, in a portion of the lawgiver, was he seated. So Gad took the place of the priests on this side of the world. Go ahead. And he came with the heads of the people. Mm -hmm. He executed the justice of the Lord. When it said he came with the heads of the people, that was Ephraim and Manasseh. Go ahead. Was that it? And his judgments with Israel. All right. So let's go back to where we was at. Where was we? Second, we're in Esdras, right? Second Esdras. Verse 43. Yes. And now, they, listen, listen, I'm about to say something, y'all. I don't want some of y'all to get mad. But some of the Gadites shall see on these reservations are $5 Indians. They are not true Gadites. So don't be chasing them around, right, Captain Young? Don't be chasing white folks around, talking about, oh, poker, ooh, ooh, ooh. no, 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 that's not it. That's not a real Gadite. And the same thing they did in Brazil about whitewashing them. They tried to wash their color out. That's what they did with a lot of them. What do they call it? Blanqueamento? Blanqueamento? 
when they, they get white people to have children with our people to lighten the complexion. Heavy amongst Northern Kingdom. Heavy amongst Northern Kingdom. All right, where are we at? Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 43. Go ahead. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them mm -hmm. and held still the flood till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. So it took a year and a half to get, it don't take a year and a half to get from uh, Assyria to Africa. It doesn't take a year and a half to get from Assyria to Africa on ship. It takes that long to get to the Americas because you got to cross what? The Atlantic Ocean to get over there. Everybody understand that? Stop listening to these dumb Israelites on YouTube, including the husband and wife team. They just can't stand Northern Kingdom. Okay? Now, they may think that we're talking about white folks that claim they're in it. We're not talking about them. We're talking about real brown Northern Kingdom. And guess what? Some of them don't, are not brown. Some of them are not. Their fathers are, but they are not. That's genetics. Look it up, niggas. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just hey, get on my nerves. The bishop got to say that because they put more energy into telling you you're not Northern King than to attacking Esau for the stuff that they do. And they got a lot of views. They got a lot of views telling you uh, uh, people that we just showed in history. The other tribe that we showed historically how you're connected, they dismiss all that and attack you and put up videos over and over attacking any camp that tries to find people in Brazil and Portugal in Puerto Rico, in Dominican Republic, it's like they got a hatred for them. Yep. No, okay? They They'll do video after video after video. They are the number one attackers on trying to make sure that Northern Kingdom don't go together. And they have no videos attacking Esau. Right. They can't stop this. They can't stop this. They can't <laughs> stop this. They can't stop this. Dun, 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 dun. Bishop. And, and okay. Bishop, for where it said uh, in Ezra, where it was, where it said the Most High Hell stole the waters. Not them. There's another camp of black Hebrew Israelite idiots that they show in video of the water of the Euphrates dried up and showing Africans walking across it. Oh. And they're saying that it wasn't ships. I don't know where they got the footage of, but they're trying to tell you that that's the Euphrates and the Most High dried up all the water and it shows a bunch of people walking with their children across the waters to say, no, this is where they walk for a year and a half. Hey, that hey, makes absolutely no sense. No sense. The Euphrates wasn't dried up back then. It's being dried up now. Okay, we're gonna say deep. Right, Bishop. Um, what's what's happening? Like you got you got I got saw something circulating on, on on social media. They got a clip with you saying that the people, the people, the original people of in Mexico and so forth was dark skin. Yeah, they were. You know, and so they say, you see, you see, um, Bishop Nathaniel is coming around, he teaching that all that all Israel is dark skin. No, that's not what we're teaching. Nope. I just just to clear it up. It's right, circling right, right. all over. That's not we teach. That's not what we're teaching. You are who your father is. That's right. The original, the original Israelites, they were dark. But when you mix, when you mix, okay, you the, you, the um the phenotype and your complexion change. Right. Exactly. You understand? When you go into the, because people want to discredit the twelve tribe chart, right? <clears throat> they keep trying to discredit it. They can't understand this. The twelve tribe chart. The Lord tell us where the tribes is on this side of the world. Right. Now, is there tribes on the other side of the world? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we just teach them to in Africa, in um, Iran, and all over the world. The scripture mm -hmm. said Israel is scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. That's right. So, so we understand the tribes is all over the earth. But the Lord showed us where the 12 tribes is on this side of the world. Mm -hmm. And that's what the 12 tribe chart is about. But we understand that. There's there's um Isica in Africa. Right. You understand? We understand there's Benjamin in Africa still. Mm -hmm. It's Judah still in Africa. Right. You know, but we we are going by the tribe that on this side of the world. And as we learn and we go over there and we teach the brothers and sisters over there that wake up and hear this teaching, we know okay, they Israel. Right. right. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, we just learned that some brothers who open the Bible, they don't have no reason. The reason don't kick in. That's right. what's going through these brothers' mind. Cause they want to be the hitman in charge, but they're not. They're not. They have to be learned all over again. Mm -hmm. Know how the precept go about, so they can teach it. But they're so they're too ignorant to just humble themselves and learn. Mm -hmm. Hey, and with the history the bishop just brought out, 
If you go out in the street and you have the 12 tribes chart and you try to add all those places historically that the bishop just searched out, you won't have a chart. You'll have a damn book. Right. You'll have like 19 signs out there. So that's the most stupid. Anytime somebody come with that 12 tribes chart to argue, you, take them to the white man. Because you, you have problems with the people on the chart, but you have no discrepancy with the lies that the white man did to create all this confusion. Right. Exactly. Back to 2nd Ezra 13. What verse you at? 45. And the same region is called Arsuri. Read verse 45 again. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. And the same region is called Arsuri. Right. So now verse 43 proves they went by ships when it says they entered into Euphrates. Okay. By the narrow passages of the what? River. For the most high then showed signs from the hell still what? The flood. This is water. Flood is water. I don't see how people get so damn stupid. Anything to try to prove that we're wrong. We're not wrong, brothers and sisters. Fall in line and follow. That's all we can say. Read 45 again. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. And the same region is called Arsereth. Arsereth. Put it on the screen. Okay. The Jewish Encyclopedia. Can we read that, Solomon? Arsereth. The name of the land beyond the great river, far away from the habitation of man, in which the ten tribes of Israel will dwell, observing the laws of Moses until the time of the restoration. According to 4th Ezra 13, verse 45, Columbus identified America with this land. See that? Columbus identified America with this land. That's why the Spaniards and them came to the side of the world. There's a movie... 1492 starring Jean-Luc Depardieu, where he says, I know there's another land because of the writings of Esdras. So I don't know what these other Israelites are talking about. That's why I say, st stop window shopping, stop listening to them. They don't know what they're talking about, okay? Give me Hosea 11 and 10. Hosea 11 and 10. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 11 and verse 10. They shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. See that? How we get to the west? Because Ephraim and Manasseh took us, according to Deuteronomy 33, 17, 2 Ezra uh, 13, 40 to 45. Read that part again. They shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall shall tremble from the west. We shall tremble from the west. Was that the whole verse? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the priests that we read about, the, the ministers of Satan, those priests and missionaries did the same thing to the northern kingdom as they did to our people in Africa. Give me Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 1. Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 1. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. Mm -hmm. O Lord, how long shall I cry? And thou wilt not hear, even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. So Habakkuk was crying out to the Lord prophetically of violence. Go ahead. Why dost thou show me iniquity, and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Mm -hmm. Read. Therefore the law is slack. Therefore God's law is slacked. Go ahead. And judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth come pass about the righteous. Uh -huh. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. Now, you might ask yourself, well, who are the wicked here? Now, we know according to Malachi chapter 1, and what verse? 4. Esau, Edom is the wicked. The Caucasians are the wicked. Read. Let's go on now. Behold ye among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe, mm. though it be told you. Watch this. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans. Now a Christian will go, up. Oh, see, it's not talking about Esau, Edom. It's talking about the Chaldeans. That was the upper echelon or the elites amongst Babylon. But it is talking about them because when you go to, give me that Psalms 137, 7 and 8, about the daughter of Babylon. Esau, Edom followed all the rhetoric of Babylon. They followed them in violence. Religion, all of that. Read that again. Psalm, Psalm 137. Psalm chapter 137, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, 
who said, race it, race it. Destroy it, destroy it. Even to the foundation thereof. Here it comes. O daughter of Babylon. O daughter of Babylon. So Esau Edom is called the daughter of Babylon. These are your Chaldeans. Go ahead. Who are to be destroyed. Who are to be destroyed. Let's go back to Habakkuk 1 and 6, please. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans. So that's why I said many times when you read the Bible, brothers and sisters, the Bible verses have double meanings. Like it says, is it Job 11 and 6? Get that real quick. And I know there may be some new people watching. But it says Chaldeans. I don't get it. I'm confused. Just be quiet and listen. Job chapter 11 and verse 5. But oh, that God would speak and open his lips against thee, and that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which is. So the secrets of wisdom is double to that which is, meaning to that which is written. They have double meanings, okay? Let's go on back, Solomon, to Habakkuk 1 and 6. Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 6. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land. Which shall march through the breadth of the land. Now you got to look at history. Did the white man march through the breadth of the land on this side of the world? Yes, they did. The same thing they did in Africa, they did on this side of the world. Go ahead. To possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. Now, did, did they possess these dwelling places that are not theirs? Yes. Go ahead. They are terrible and dreadful. Is the white man terrible and dreadful? Yes. Go ahead. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Everybody heard about the evil of the white man. Go ahead. Their horses also are swifter than leopards. Did they come on this side of the world with horses? Yes, they did. Go ahead. And are more fierce than the evening wolves. Uh -huh. And their horsemen shall spread themselves. And their horsemen shall come from far. Oh, come from far. Go ahead. They shall fly as the eagle that hasteth to eat. What was the symbol of Spain? The eagle. What is the symbol of America? The eagle. Go ahead. They shall come all for violence. Why did Columbus come? For violence. Violence. Go ahead. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind. What direction did they come from? The east. Go ahead. And they shall gather the captivity as the sand. They enslaved us. That's what that means. Go ahead. And they shall scoff at the kings. There was kings, what they call caciques on this side of the world. They shall scoff at the... Hey, give me that picture. Hey, how come y'all got to... Do I have to tell y'all to put pictures on the screen? Come on. I want the one with Montezuma. I want Montezuma the second, I believe it was... You, I, just sent it I want that picture because I liked it. Yes, give me that. Come on, IT. Come on, IT. The first is for all to see it. So, to the Israelites watching us online, we say shalom to you. The hater Israelites, we say shalom to you too. Husband and wife, we say shalom to you. We love you. You are our people. We pray for y'all daily. Come on, IT. Okay, can you give me the one Montezuma the first? I want the war, the battle. Listen to what I'm talking, reading about. They shall scoff at no, no. They listen what I just read. It says they shall come all for violence. Then ten, and they shall scoff at the kings. They were fighting the king. They were. Abiel threw them off. He, he sent that to them. <laughs> Abiel, you sent the wrong photo. I don't want those drawings. Yes, that one. Thank you. That's yes. what I want. Put it on the screen. Uh, Solomon, can you read it again? And keep that on the screen. Start from verse 9. They shall come all... Can y'all zoom in? We don't need the black on the side there. Get rid of that. Blow it up big. Raise it up. Raise it up. Yeah, right there. Go ahead, read it, uh, Solomon. They shall come all for violence. This is what you're looking at. When the Spanish conquistadors came, they came for violence. Go ahead. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind. These Spaniards came from the east. Go ahead. And they shall gather the captivity as the sand. They overcame us, like it says in Revelation 13, 7. Go ahead. And they shall scoff at the kings. That's, that's all them scoff. Now, you're a king to hell with you. We're going to kill you. Go ahead. And the princes shall be a scorn unto them. Mm -hmm. They shall deride every stronghold. This was a stronghold. Lower it a bit so you can see that this was a temple. Lower it. This was a temple. That's what it means when it says they shall deride every stronghold. Go ahead. For they shall heap dust 
and take it. When it says they show heap dust, that's mean confusion. You know, like when somebody throw dust in your eyes. So what did they do? They had their missionaries to cause confusion about love, peace, and hair grease. Come on, stop Bishop. it. Yes. Look at the um the Jesuit priest praying over the right bottom left. Can y'all zoom in bottom left right there? Look at that. And the other one taking the jewels off his neck. Where, 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 where? Right Show me. Right next to him, right there. Yeah, look at him snatching the jewels off his neck. These people are wicked as hell. And y'all got them set up as God in Christ. Hey, Bishop, you know it's crazy now that you show this, because a lot of times people will ask, or white people will ask why they can't come into our school. And we just so showed historically that the first way to take down the empire was to uh, these white people to come in with their religious uh, belief systems and taint the minds of the people. Yeah. So some of y'all want them to come in here and sit down right next to you knowing what their forefathers did because you love them more than your own people and the word of God. Right. So stop saying are we racist. It's historical that they send missionaries in first to weaken and soften the minds of the people to the hardship and the destruction that they did to them. Next thing you know, you're inviting them to your house, you're marrying them, like some other Israelite camps. Y'all don't see Israelite camps? They got them set up, reading, coming there, and then arguing, saying, you won Westers, you won Westers, and causing that division. And we just showed historically the missionary taking the cross off. Can we put that picture again? Praying over him with Praying the cross over him and with the cross. his jewelry. And beating them up because they let their guard down and let them into their place of residence. That's what they want to do with the Israelite movement. And then when you tell them they can't come in, you're racist. Yep. You're racist. You're all black. You're, you're black supremacists. No, we know historically that this is a plan that you use to destroy people. You set in your people under the guise of God and then put that belief system on the people, then attack them later on. So let's go on back. To, where we at, uh, uh, Solomon? We finished verse 10. Read. Verse 11. Then shall his mind change. When it says his mind shall change, it goes back to that dust. They say, you know what? We can manipulate them with the Bible. We can pervert the scriptures with these priests and missionaries. That's what it's going into. Go ahead. And he shall pass over and offend. And offend the word of God. Imputing this, his power unto his God. Can we show a picture of his God, please? Put a picture of his God up. The same God they got today. Put it up on the screen. Yep, put it on the screen. It's the same deal. Read again, Solomon. Read the whole verse. Then shall his mind change. Mm -hmm, that Christian garbage. Go ahead. And he shall pass over mm -hmm. and offend. Imputing this, his power unto his God. That's what it's talking about. Now put that other image you had up there of the wars. I just saw one with war. I want to see that on the screen. Yeah, that one. Let me look. Put it on the screen. Let me see it. Put it on the big one. Not that one. The one you just had. The one you just had. Okay, can you? Yeah, y'all can put those on the screen. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Come on. I need people at home to see it. Okay, this is the conquistadors. Slaughtering the are these the Aztecs or Incas? I'm not sure, but it was Northern Kingdom. Y'all can see Northern Kingdom on the right, my right side, Aztecs, and the Spaniards with their armor with the crosses on. Okay, give me the next one. Yeah, blow that up big too. That's uh King Atahualpa being burned. This is Den Shella's mind. You're gonna accept our Christian religion or we're gonna kill you. He got his fringes on and border blue. Okay. They'd have killed him anyway. Give me the next one. Look at this. Look at that. And and you see they're on horses, right? You see the horses? Didn't we just read about that, Solomon? Yes, sir. In verse 8, their horses are, are also swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. Yes, right there on the, the left. The Inca over there, you see they, that um, they dress as a leopard? Right. Y'all see that? You see the temple in the back. The two, three in the back. Online class request. Yeah, check online class re request. Put on the screen. Put that on the screen. Yep, this is one in color with the board of blue and the fringes. Okay. Now the last picture. Abiel, you had another picture? Online class request. This Christianity is a damnable religion. I'll tell you. I'm letting y'all know straight. Okay. Did y'all get that? Yeah, put that on the screen. 
Look at that. Look at them armor, horses. Okay. That's what we're reading in Habakkuk chapter 1, from 1 down through 11. The same thing the Babylonians did, the same thing the white man did on this side of the world. It's the same damn thing. Okay. So now, a hey, hey, brothers and sisters at home that listen to the husband and wife that really don't know what this is, you can see that, look, they're brown. What you mad for? They're brown. Okay. We just saying when they mix with the white man, they lightened up. That's it. But it's the seed of Israel. I want all y'all to understand. It's the seed within. Christ said, my sheep hear my voice. Strangers, they shall not follow. And okay. that's why you got a lot of camps. All they look at is facial features and skin uh, color, and that's it. Okay? And they don't understand that the spirit of the man could be an Israelite based on his father. You can't look at nobody and tell them they're not Israel. And that's what they like to do. A lot of these new camps popping up, that's what they like to do and get mad. They watch our videos. If somebody's too light here, they're saying you're letting heathen in. Mm -hmm. Okay? And hey. they'll never ever, they're mad that we speak to uh, Northern Kingdom, but you're not going to find nothing on their page getting on Esau with all the atrocities Esau did. Right. Their primary focus is the anger that we are speaking in these places right. that they don't believe they look like uh, how you and I look. Hey, you know, a lot of people thought Andrew Tate was an Edomite. That's why last week I had to show his father. Right. His father black. What the hell are you talking about? He might love Esau and live like Esau, but Andrew Tate and his brother Tristan are black. Regardless of their complexion, their mama white. Hey, guess what? Captain Shem. I'm sorry, Cap. I got to use an example. People go, he a white boy. You got a white. Captain Shem is black. His daddy black. That's mama right. Mama white. That's it. the hell wrong with y'all? You know, Bishop, they don't believe uh, 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 that it's from the seed of the father. They don't believe. They say their doctrine is if you mix, they're no longer Israel. Oh, Captain Azariah, too, in Oklahoma. His daddy black. His mama white. They just very light skinned. Did, 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 did. But they are people. What is wrong with y'all? And this is for not for y'all in here, but for you Israelites at home. Get your minds right. Come on. Come on, y'all. Hey, uh, IT, give me the BBC article, the news, bbc.com news. Please give me the article. Uh, Canada, yes, read this. Canada, 751 unmarked graves found at residential school. So this is this was last year, I mean two years ago. Two th I forgot, they changed the year, right? It's 2023? Now that's, this was 2021, June. Raise it up. Okay, let's read this. An indigenous nation in Canada said... You had to try some of the Gadites in Canada. Read this. It has found 751 unmarked graves at the site of a former residential school in Saskatchewan. The Cowessis First Nation said the discovery was, quote, the most significantly substantial to date in Canada. It comes week, weeks after the remains of 215 children were found at a similar residential school in British Columbia. Mm-hmm. Quote, this is not a mass grave site. These are unmarked graves, said Cowess's chief, Cadmus Delorme. The, Re Mar Re the Maraeville Indian Residential School was operated by the Roman Catholic Church. See that? Esau's church is then shall his mind change. Go ahead and give power to his God. Go ahead. From 1899 to the 1980s, when the First Nation took over operations, in the area where Cowessis is now located in southeastern Saskatchewan. It is not yet clear if all of the remains are linked to the school. They are. Go ahead. It was one of more than 130 compulsory boarding schools funded by the Canadian government and run by religious authorities during the 19th and 20th centuries with the aim of assimilating indigenous youth. An estimated 6,000 children died. 6,000 children died under these white folks. Go ahead. While attending these schools, according make to... Make it make sense. How do children die in your custody? You're supposed to be teaching them, but you're raping them and beating them and, uh, and, and not feeding them. That's what they were doing. Go ahead. According to... Read Florida, the whole thing again and estimate it. An estimated 6,000 children died while attending these schools. According to former Truth and Reconciliation Commission Chair Murray Sinclair, students were often housed in poorly built, poorly heated, and unsanitary facilities. Mm -hmm. 
physical and sexual abuse. See, that? that's why I said they was raping them. Y'all thought I made that up. They was raping them children. Go ahead. Physical and sexual abuse at the hands of school authorities led others to run away. Last month, the Cowesses began to use ground-penetrating radar to locate unmarked graves at the cemetery of the Maraevo Indian Residential School in Saskatchewan. Thursday's announcement marked the first phase of the search efforts. All right, give me the picture of Columbus. Yes, this is that bastard right there. Uh, and, and you know, in Santo Domingo, we went there, Dominican Republic, they have a huge, four, almost 40-foot statue of this guy. You remember Captain Zeff? We're like, what the hell is that? That is Columbus. He's the greatest king of all times. Are you kidding me? He murdered your people. No, he did not. No, no, he did. Yes, he did. No, no. You will be shocked at the ignorance Bishop, of our people. They have a giant cross that lights up at night. Right. On the, exactly. on the ground. It's a remember, building. Remember in Puerto Rico, too, that huge Columbus statue. Yes, yeah, Puerto Rico, you got the same damn thing. And y'all, oh, mi amor, mi amor. No, that's French. How do you say my love? <laughs> same way, same thing. Okay. <laughs> same damn way. And this dude was a genocidal maniac. I'm going to show you that, too. Give me the next picture. Yeah, there's the Nina, the Peter, and the Santa Maria. Is it what is it? The Nina, Nina the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. I knew y'all would know it. Yeah. Uh, Bishop, I, I, I forgot. We forgot to mention that Santo Domingo has a beacon dedicated to uh, uh, Christopher Columbus. You can see it at night from space. From space, damn! So they got our people to love them. Give me the next one, next picture, please. Blow it up big. That's Columbus with the ships. Go ahead, next one. Here you go. Come on. There we go. See with the cross. Look at the priests. You got the, the Indians around. Go ahead, next picture. Look at that. That damn giant cross teaching us that garbage. Read, I mean, next one. Look at this. You can't, you can't make this stuff up. You Next see, one. You see, that make you believe that, you know, those who come to murder, then they also come with the, uh, yeah, the other set. Right. Or this is, this is Christ, you see? Exactly. You see, they're the good ones. Mm -hmm. they're, they're this goes with then shall his mind change. After they murdered and enslaved people, they say, okay, let's teach them our garbage religion now. Go ahead. Next picture. Blow it up so we can see it. Mm -hmm. They had them three ships in the back. Nina, uh, what is it? Pinta. Nina, Pinga, and Santa Maria. Yes, sir, right there. Yes, sir. Uh, Pinta? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Puta? What the hell is this? <laughs> Give me the next Pinta. Picture. Pinta. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are you offended? No, oh, okay. no, not at all. Not at all. Okay. Give, blow that one up. A lot, a, a, a lot of the, the Spanish that came over here were uh, with. Uh, yes. So look, 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 you got two dead babies, and they're about to chop the woman up, kill her with the axe. You can't make this stuff up, okay? In the name of white Jesus, next picture. That's the funeral, I mean, the burial site of Columbus. That's the Seville Cathedral. Look at that. Look, you can't make, they made it look all glorious. Give me the next one about what did the conquistadors, what did the Spanish conquistadors do? Yes, let's go to the top. Solomon, let's read this. What did the Spanish conquistadors do? Now, there's another book I showed y'all before that said a majority of the conquistadors was Amalek, Jewish people, Jewish. Go ahead. Conquistadors would, quote, explore unknown land by subjugating, enslaving, killing, and torturing the natives, as well as stealing their gold, silver, jade, precious gemstones, and other resources. They came from all over Europe, but most of them were Spanish, specifically from the southern provinces. The conquistadors' main feature is that they were ambitious, which makes sense when you discover that these people were normally poor or belonged to the low nobility at best. The promise of great wealth was enough to make people join the cause. Many were veteran soldiers. The Spanish were Europe's finest at the time, and some were expert navigators or strategists. Sadly, they not only killed, enslaved, tortured... See that? So what did they do to the Indians? Killed, enslaved, tortured... Go ahead. 
and looted. Robbed them, okay? But also destroyed <laughs> temples, burned historical texts, and melted precious works of art. Come on. As Spanish Catholic men, these conquistadors and their crews, and soon enough the Spanish Empire justified their invasions and stealing with evangelization. See they that? Sp- Justify the invasion and stealing with evangel. That's the same word King Leopold used in his letter to evangelize them. Go ahead. They said they were going to new lands to spread the Lord's word and save the native souls from eternal damnation. What scripture did we read about that in Galatians? Y'all remember? Galatians 1, 6, and 7 about perverting the gospel of Jesus, gospel of God. Next one. Let's read that. Who were the most famously brutal Spanish conquerors? Let's get to the ranking of the most bloodthirsty, ruthless, cruel conquistadors of the European expeditions to what they call the Indies. I ranked them from least to most brutal according to their conquest strategies, depth tolls, ambition, and sadism. So let's see the ranking. Raise it up. Let's see the ranking. What did you do? Put it back. Can we look? Can you put it back, please? No. Oh, God, my God. IT, put that article back. It gave the ranking as in black. Yes. Can you read that? Number five. Okay. Go ahead, Solomon. Number five, Juan Ponce de Leon. Number four, Pedro de Alvarado. Number three, Francisco Pizarro. Number two, Christopher Columbus. Number one, Hernan Cortez. So Hernan Cortez was the worst. Columbus was the second worst. You can't make this stuff up. And our people love them so. They name their children after them. You can't make this stuff up. Give me the next article. It's the same one. It goes into detail. Ponce, that's a drawing of Ponce de Leon. Number five, Juan Ponce de Leon. Death by poisoned arrow. In the early 1500s, most conquistadors started their careers in the Caribbean islands. Juan Ponce de Leon, a prolific genocidal maniac, joined Columbus's second expedition and played a key role in the massacres of Hispaniola and Puerto Rico, where he became the governor. But his greed knew no borders, so he continued on his way to a place he baptized as Florida. On his second trip there, he was welcomed in Tampa Bay by the natives who were done with him and all the conquistadors. He was gravely hurt before disembarking and died in La Habana a few days later. Thank God. Give me the next one. Number four. Pedro. You got to thank God when they drop dead. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with y'all? These dudes were genocidal maniacs. Go ahead. Number four. Pedro de Alvarado. Death by horse crushing. Good. Thank God. <laughs> we ain't gonna cry. Go ahead. One of the most notable milestones of Pedro de Alvarado as a brutal conquistador was the massacre of Tenochtitlan, the capital city of the Aztecs. It was a result of his volatile and impulsive character, since it was unprovoked and unauthorized by his superior, Hernan Cortez. By doing this, he killed unarmed men, women, and children during a local festivity. The logic behind the killings was that if natives had received them with pounds of gold as a gift, imagine the quantities they must have. So they killed the natives to steal their treasures. The most common manner of torture before the killings was to burn the government's feet. This is what Pedro de Alvarado and Hernan Cortes did to Aztec Emperor Cuauhtémoc. So they hung them up and burned them by their feet. Go ahead. He never talked, and according to oral tradition, he said, quote, am I taking a delightful bath? These damn devils. Give me the next one. I'm glad he died. The horse crushed his ass. Number three, Francisco Pizarro. Death by stabbing. Good. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you, Father. Pizarro is one of the Spanish conquistadors to tear down the Inca Empire during the Peruvian campaign. He forcefully conversed the empire emperor. So remember, remember, uh, the Incas is, did I say Inca? 
Yes. Yeah, that's South America. That's where they were located. The Incas was South America. Go ahead. He forcefully conversed the emperor before strangling him and killed thousands of Incas. These that's the tribe of what, brothers? Asher. Very good. Very good. These acts became the preliminary blueprint of the mass genocides that followed. Pizarro was murdered by the son of his former colleague, whom he had sentenced to death. Good. Ain't nobody crying. If you're giving the next one. Number two, Christopher Columbus, mm -hmm. death by writer's syndrome. What is writer's syndrome? I forgot. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. He needed to drop dead. All my Northern Kingdom brothers and sisters, get your minds right. Pull your head out of Columbus' rectum and learn the Bible. <laughs> what did he say? What's wrong with him? Why did he say that? <laughs> Go ahead. We did that. It it's out. It's out. You're wiping all the stuff off your head. Go ahead. In recent years, Cristobal Colon, Christopher Columbus, has been knocked off his pedestal. As new and not so new information came to light about his career as one of the most notorious conquistadors, not explorers. Mm -hmm. Slavery, torture, and genocide are linked to his name today. So notice it says the most notorious conquistadors, not explorers. They didn't come to explore anything. They came to conquest means what? Conquer. That's what they came for. Go ahead. It's unbelievable. What's that unbelievable? Where are you reading? Where are you at? Slavery. Can you read the slavery again? Slavery, torture, and genocide are linked to his name today. It's unbelievable that there are still holidays and other honors in his name. Mm. But each year, more Columbus monuments are vandalized and torn down. Thank God. Go ahead. <laughs> Good. Go ahead. Torn down where? Torn down where? In Latin America. Wow, so they waking up. All praises. I'm glad. Go ahead. And the U.S. due to indigenous rights protests. All praises. Give me the next one now. Hernan Cortez. Number one. Hernan Cortez. Death by pleurisy. I don't know what that is. Anybody know? What, wait, get the Lord a hand. Whatever it is, I'm glad he did. Whatever it is. I don't, maybe it means a roach bit him and he died. I don't know. Read that. Here you have it. The worst of all the conquistadors, Hernan Cortez. After his Cuban campaign, he went rogue and traveled to Mexico. The small expedition eventually... So after he finished with Cuba, that's Manessa, he went to Mexico, which is Issachar. Okay? Huh? This, this small expedition... Wait, wait, hold on. Zeph got something for us. It says pleurisy, inflammation of the pleura. With or without a liquid effusion in the pleural cavity. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Yeah. Oh, a like a lung core. infection? And pain in the effect. Oh, okay. Side. Oh, got you. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank Can y'all put back the bastard? Put the bastard back up. Right, exactly. Read that. Where were you at, Solomon? The small. Okay, go ahead. This small expedition eventually resulted in the slaughter and ruination of the Aztec Empire. A perfect example of the, quote, strokes of luck is the story of Hernan Cortes and how he conquered the New World. Learning history in the classrooms of Mexico, something just doesn't add up. How did a few dozens of people who came in three ships massacre and dominate millions of natives, many of whom were bloodthirsty warriors? Next one. It's going to continue to the top. The natives were initially impressed by the Spanish conquistadors as they brought shiny armor, horses, and mirrors. Unfortunately, they also imported lethal diseases such as smallpox, measles, and typhus. What scripture is that? That's Deuteronomy 28. What verse, brothers? 61. Go ahead. There is no way of knowing the exact number of deaths they caused. But experts estimate that 60% to 95% of the native population was wiped out. Okay. While this was happening, Cortez had to fight the Aztecs, the most murderous and sadistic of pre-Hispanic civilizations. But they changed their name to Hispanics now, some Latino. Go ahead. When Hernan and his crew were invading the coast, he collected a bounty of 12 women. One of them was the iconic, unparalleled, unparalleled, La, La Malinche. 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 
she was beyond intelligent. Her ability to learn languages and to establish diplomatic relations is what got her so far in history, along with Hernan and La Conquista, the conquest. She was the one who told Hernan about the utter contempt that other smaller civilizations had against the Aztec butchers. So she pointed everybody else out. They don't like us over there. They don't like, yeah, I always use the woman. I tell you, go ahead. Through La Malinche, he created liaisons and conspired to defeat them. Many expeditioners said that none of the conquests of the New World would have been possible without her. Wow, you can't make this stuff up. Huh? That, uh, they consider her as the modern version of Eve. Wow, wow. You can't. You know, I'll tell you, brother, y'all be putting all your trust in a woman. Oh, God. Oh, God. Where we at, Solomon? Oh, Deuteronomy 2868. I know y'all want to know why we're going there. And I want the article from the Guardian, please. Solomon, read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. And no man shall buy you. So now they're online talking about, see, they don't fit that curse. No, they don't. Put it on the screen. Put it on the screen. Raise it up in the Guardian. Read this. Mexico. Archaeologists in Mexico identify first Mayan slave ship. Ship had been used to take Mayas captured. Remember, the Mayans. Who remembers where the Mayans are located? Central America, right under Mexico. Everybody understand that? Okay, read that again. Ship had been used to take Mayas captured during an 1847 to 1901 rebellion to work in sugarcane fields in Cuba. See that? They was taken to Cuba as slaves. Go ahead. Archaeologists in Mexico have identified a ship that carried Mayan people into virtual slavery in the 1850s. So what do you mean they don't fit the curses? You people at home, that be listening to these dummies online talking about they ain't going slavery on ships. You don't know nothing. Be quiet. You better shut your black lips. Go ahead. The first time such a ship has been found. The wreck of the Cuban-based paddle wheel steamboat was found in 2017 but wasn't identified until researchers from the National Institute of Anthropology and History checked contemporary documents and found it was the ship, quote, La Union. The ship had been used to take Mayas captured during an 1847 through 1901 rebellion known as, quote, the War of the Castes. Okay, so now, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. To work in sugarcane fields in Cuba. Slavery was illegal in Mexico at the time, but operators of similar ships had reportedly deceived Myers, left landless by the conflict to, quote, sign on as contract workers. Now, real quick, there were other ships that took them to Spain and Rome as slavery. I didn't get those articles.